If you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Tiny Greek fighter. Just like a teeny tiny what? Misty's just like a teeny tiny Greek freighter. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of The Thing About Cars. I'm Mickey Desai around the table. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Dave Polly. How are you, sir? I'm not sure I'm going to live much longer. <laughs> is this because of your liver? Oh, no, no, no. That, that's, you know this, is, this is the middle, the week between uh, Pride and Halloween in Atlanta, also known as the Gay High Holy Days. Yeah. And my guest just said that he never got the invite. So I'm copying that. There we go. So Steve is what they us. all that's what they all say. So I'm glad you're still with us, Dave. Don't die, please. Ben, how are you, sir? Uh well, I think I will live. Um, so there's that. <laughs> okay, so far the mortality factor of uh of the the show is up by forty percent. That's excellent. <laughs> Don, we haven't seen you in a while. I'm glad you're still living. What's going on? She's muted, though. Oh, I'm unmuted. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm tired. 10 a.m., Ben. 10 a.m. on <laughs> Sunday morning. Really? Huh. It's my only sleeping in day. <laughs> so for those who don't know, Ben is in a band. And oh, yeah. uh, the band switched their rehearsal time to conflict with our uh, usual recording time on Sundays. And, you know, we support Ben and his music habit, but that does mean now we're recording early on Sundays. Yeah, uh, that means we are unshowered, uncaffeinated. And we're oh, and yeah. we're not supporting Dawn and her sneeding sleeping habit. <laughs> right. The only person who's actually awake and presumably sober when we do these recordings is Misty. How are you, Misty? Apparently Greek. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my mantra. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, you know, basing it on what Dave has told me. Although I will say that today has been a day of napping because, you know, the sprint, the Formula One is in Austin this weekend, so the sprint race was at some ungodly hour, like midnight. And yes, I'm old, so that midnight is ungodly. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, our our guest has joined us, Stephen Tubbs. Stephen, what is your official title now? I'm gonna make sure I get it right. Uh, they actually ended up voting me president of the Formula SAE Globe at Kennesaw State University. So I'm currently sitting as that. Congratulations, sir. I know that's uh, yeah. a big job. You guys do quite a lot throughout the year, and I'm, I'm glad you're the president. Um, uh, we're we're going to do a quick interview, uh, nothing scripted, no real no real scripted questions for us. We're going to talk about what the club does because I think that we've, you know, we've talked with um, Dean Case about that before, but uh but we've never actually talked with your group specifically about what the SAE club does. And at the end of the segment, we always ask our guests a handful of questions. So I'm going to give these to you in advance. So you can think about them while we're talking. Uh, uh, don't answer them until the end of the question, until the end of the segment. Number one is what's your dream car. Number two is where's your next road trip going to be. Number three is what's the most fascinating thing you've seen on the road or maybe in someone's garage. And then a fourth question, which is random, and we won't decide it until we actually ask it. So um, so those are the four questions. But in the meantime, how long have you been associated with the SAE Club at Kennesaw? Uh, about two and a half years total. Um, I started college back in fall of 21. So I've been a part of the organization since the pretty much the earliest chance I got, which was first week of school. So, Wow. So you knew early on that you wanted to be associated with the club. Yeah, well, I I knew that early on that I wanted to do something similar, the engineering competition type style um, organization, because I'd done uh, robotics all the way through from elementary school all the way through high school. And my robotics program didn't have anything for college kids. So I wanted something else that would grow my skills. And then I found Formula SAE and it seemed like a perfect fit. And it was it just worked out really beautifully. Yeah, sounds like it. So before I forget, let's tell our audience, what does the club do? So uh, we build, design, and compete with small-scale Formula One race cars, uh, single-seaters, and yes, we do actually put students in the driver's seats. Um, We engineer them from the ground up, uh, building and designing all of the little aspects of the car, the suspension, the chassis, 
uh, how it handles going into corners. We look at all of these factors, where we want our CG, what power we want in it. We currently use a Yamaha R6 engine in our internal combustion car. And then we also have an EV car, which uses an MRAX 228, which is a light aircraft glider motor um, and a 300 volt battery pack. So both of these cars have some pretty good power to them. They're making between 70 to 85 horsepower on our team. And some other teams can get like quite a lot more horsepower out of their setups. And I mean, the entire goal of the competition is to get faster, lighter and stronger and also be able to prove to the judges who happen to be industry professionals like Dean Case, who come out to um, competitions and volunteer, uh, proving to them why our design is better than everyone else's or what steps did we take to validate our design in the design process. So not only are we racing, but we're also competing against the other teams to try and prove that our design and our process is better. So we take all that into account. It's about a team of about 20 to 30 students, usually sometimes a lot more. I know McGill University brought like 365 kids to um, one of the competitions last year. So that was really interesting. Um, but most of the groups sit between the 20 and 30 mark, as I just said, like my organization is sitting right about at the 30, 35 right now. So it's a pretty interesting group of kids with a lot of knowledge being passed year to year between all the students. That's amazing. It, and yeah. having seen what you guys do, Ben, I don't know if, if uh, you've seen anything that they do, but I've actually seen one of the cars and I've seen their workshop and it just makes me jealous. I, I want to go back to school. I think um, I've seen some pictures of it, but yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so how does, I, I mean, I've got one last question and then I'm going to ask the other gang to chip in to, to chime in with their questions here, but uh, robotics into automotive, is there... Is there a space where we can make a Venn diagram where the two skills interlap? I mean, overlap? Is it there? A, uh, I, I mean, I guess I'm leaning towards the whole self-driving car thing, the automaton. <laughs> that, uh, uh, yeah, you know, how does how does the world of robotics fit in with the world of automotive engineering? So, I mean, engineering in general as a whole, like you've got a lot of overlapping abilities, right? I mean, you've got your core abilities to be able to to learn how to design something, how to program something, how to think of a process to make something or manufacture something, right? And you also have the soft skills of like working with teammates and other like majors or professions, like electrical engineers, working with mechanical engineers, working with mechatronics engineers, like yeah. you make it make that perfect blend, right? Um, I think that aspect plays a part in both sides, the robotics and the automotive. But like specifically for me, my most of the skills that transfer between those two programs were those soft skills and those transferable skills that you're going to see in every single aspect of engineering. The robotics side of it specifically, like making the big arms that work in factories. I actually started my, my college career as a mechatronics engineer, and I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to go into more of the design side. So I switched to mechanical engineering after my first semester at KSU. Um, and that's worked out a lot better for me so far. Um, but it's really just... Robotics engineering focuses on a certain niche skill set and automotive focuses on another niche skill set. But both of those skill sets share a core of like basics and those basics can be transferred to any engineering practice wherever you go, wherever you go to school, wherever you're going to go to work. So as long as you learn those basics and you grow those basics and you try and like do the best you can to clearly communicate with other engineers because most engineers are kind of like nerds, you know, like introverts don't like to talk to people sometimes. And then the rest of us are kind of like out there and outspoken. Like I see Dave down there is just like, whoa. Um, <laughs> speaking so as the, speaking as the one extreme extrovert engineer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> There's very few of us out there. I'm also one of those. So um, most of the engineers I know don't like to go talk to people and they're just like, really, do I have to give a presentation? And I'm like, yes, yes, you do have to give a presentation. Yeah. Actually, um, Stephen, I will agree with you that the only reason I had any success in my career is not that I'm particularly bright. I'm an engineer who can successfully assemble subject and predicate. <laughs> I feel you on that one, man. Um, but yeah, that basic core skill set, I mean, like it's transferable from any practice to any practice. I mean, like you'll see it in other other professions as well, like business and marketing and then accounting, like you've got your core style. And if you take that and transfer it to whatever you want to do or whatever you love to do, it shows through a lot more than if you just kind of like go with the flow, I guess. 
what have you guys got for Stephen? Any other, uh, what, how can we dig into the whole SAE thing that's going on at Kennesaw? There's a ton of cool stuff happening there. And, and the, 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 the students are all really remarkable people. I've met a good, good number of them last year. Was it last year, Stephen? Uh, yeah, actually last yeah. September. I, I think it was yeah. September 20th last year yeah. when you came out that's with right. Dean Case, right? Yep. So oh, I've got one. The, and this is perhaps a little unfair, so I will will premise it with my own experience. Having di- done similar engineering type work when I was an undergrad and, and having access to a wind tunnel, a Mach 1 wind tunnel in the middle of the night and a case of beer led to a lot of uh, unseemly mischief on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. Yeah. Left unsupervised. What has the club gotten itself into? <laughs> Like mischief wise, yeah, um, not a lot in recent years. Uh, previously, quite a bit of mischief, but a couple of years ago, we had a couple of guys who really decided to turn the club around and turn us from the sit around, drink beer, turn wrenches into the we are professionals, we act professional. Sure, we have fun, but we have fun outside of work hours and not on campus, so um. Like since then, our mischief has really just been getting the work done the best we can in our situation, right? Obviously, we're we're college kids. We don't have professional grade tools. We don't have a wind tunnel. So we go out there and we make it work. Um, One of the things that comes to mind is validating our front wing aero package uh, on the front of a Ford F-350 in the middle of the night, in the middle of a parking lot. So that was pretty fun. We got to build an adapter to the uh, <laughs> the front uh, chassis mounts for the F-350, and we threw a front wing on there with some shock pots, and we were driving around the parking lot. The cops were looking at us really funky because you got this mm. big truck with a tiny little wing on the front, yeah. and we're just over here taking data as much as we can. And so it's like stuff like that. We also get That's thrown hilarious. out of the parking lot in the middle of the night because we're <laughs> in the internal combustion car is obviously pretty loud, and. Uh, it's the parking lot we practice in is right next to some of the apartments. So they'll, the cops will come over and be like, Hey, we got, we, we got another like noise complaint. Like, could you all like pack up for the night? Like, yeah, sure. We're out of there in five minutes. <laughs> like we know it's coming. So you're focusing on kind of on the formula one cars and everybody, you, you know, that's ever listened to the podcast knows that that is my thing. Um, Are you looking at possibly a career in, like professional automotive, like racing. That's part one. Uh, part two, Team Max or Team Hamilton? Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Please bear in mind, Stephen, your future does depend on the answer to the question two. Oh, I, I completely understand. So I think my answer to number one may help with my answer to number two. So number one, um, no, not particularly. I'm not in this club in order to get into the racing industry. There are some individuals who are, especially on my team. Like I literally have new guys come in and be like, hey, I'm an F1 fan. I want to get into F1. How would I do that? And I'm like, well, you, you're you in the right place. Like, Come do the work with us. It's very similar to what they do there. And we've got the connections to get you where you want to go if you so choose. Um, but personally, I'm not in it to get into that side of things i'm in it to build what skills i already had and to show like basically give myself something to put my energy towards because if i sit there and twiddle my thumbs after class or play a video game I, that that's not productive to me like that that doesn't help me in any way all it does is just like make me sit there so i found organizations like this both in middle school high school and now college that would help me build my skills and basically learn the things that I would need to learn in order to be successful. Um, So my answer to number two is technically I'm not a race fan very much. I do know the names Max and Hamilton because there's a lot of arguments on our team about which one is better. Um, But of the two, I would probably have to lean towards Hamilton more than Max. First you talk about Fords. Now you're talking about Hamilton. Excuse me. I need to go lay down. Love (laughs) y'all. All stream of obscenities was just edited out of this episode. Uh I just, I I just did my best impression of Yuki Sonoda. Um, (laughs) For the record, Stephen, I, you know, I'm, I I am an American and fun fact, I'm actually the only native born Georgian on the podcast. 
and I'm also the only person that doesn't live in Georgia. I currently <laughs> live um, in the Netherlands, just outside of Leiden. So there's uh, a restraining order that's responsible. <laughs> it's, okay. a lar- it's a really large restraining order. We had to get her that far away. That was the minimum yeah. acceptable distance there. Gotcha. Now, if I can just now, if, now if I can just convince somebody to franchise a Waffle House over here, my life is complete. <laughs> <laughs> the 3 a.m. Kind of Waffle House runs, man. Like there they're, is, they're amazing. Absolutely, I, I, you know. I, I think when I was about your age, I, I the many weeks that uh, the hot meal for the day was uh, hash browns. You know, yeah. and I can, I can, st- I can still order them many years later. Right. So, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, and I, I do have to admit, I didn't really, you know, I've never, I didn't start out in F1 as a Red Bull fan. I started out as a McLaren fan mm-hmm. uh, with all the tradition there for that. But um, yeah, just super excited to see, uh, you know, and, and to hear uh, that there are young Americans that are like, I want to get into F1, you know, because growing up, um, I'm, I'm originally, well, I grew up in Hall County, but was was born and raised in Raven County, uh, which is where we all hear banjos. I said I can say that I'm from there, uh, and you know, which is also not very far from Dawsonville. So mm-hmm. we've all heard of Wild Bill from Dawsonville, uh, you know. So most of the kids there, you know, tend to be you know NASCAR, drag racing, etc. But I think that is so so awesome that uh, a lot of young people are uh, you know looking to get into Formula One. So, but how how do how do you mediate those fights? Because, I mean, I, I I see it a lot on the on the chats that that I'm in, and they are just some nasty fights. They are, they are, and like traditionally, we we run a big Discord server with all of our like communication channels and whatnot, and we have breakdowns for all the engineering work and all the processes and like oh events and announcements and whatnot. But we also do have a breakdown for race fans there's like two or three channels dedicated to them and they mostly keep their fights in there to themselves their arguments and disagreements i wouldn't say it hasn't risen to fists yet or anything like that it's more like angry messages um (laughs) but they'll sit there during one of the races they're watching it and like no matter what time of the day it is and they're just dropping messages in chat for the rest of us to see and so Mm. it's pretty fun but we do have a lot of mclaren fans on our team actually so our manufacturing lead is a huge fan of mclaren and every chance she gets she will brag about mclaren 100 percent of the time Uh Um, absolutely absolutely adore lando norris and and as as we call him on on our our discord oscar pastry nice his his, his last name is piastri but we call him pastry (laughs) steven you just said something which sort of dovetails in my next question for you you have a mechanics lead what other kind of hierarchical structure goes on in the club and and i'm assuming then that leadership skills and leadership training is at least a piece of what you guys focus on yeah of course so leadership training has been a big part of my part of the team so far um there's actually a department of student leadership for ksu so we've been working hand in hand with them to provide leadership training to all of our officers outside of what leadership training we provide to our own officers right because you've got the old guys the seniors the juniors who are about to phase out, they're about to take a job, right? And they can't be part of the leadership anymore. So they pick up an, uh, basically an apprentice type thing. And they choose somebody who they think will be around for a while, who has the commitment level that they want. And they teach them everything they know. And they, they can do that in about a year. And then yeah. when that senior steps down, that person steps up into that leadership role. And it, like, it takes some adjusting and like, there's always some like growing pains and whatnot, but that's the best way to learn it. Usually is to just like actually get in there and do it. Um, but team structure wise, it's, we're, we're pretty interesting. There are a lot of other teams that do something similar to us, but, um, first off, we've got the president, the vice president, the chief engineer and the project manager, which all sit, those four positions all sit basically as the top tier we have the same amount of power kind of thing the checks and balances we format that we formatted that a while ago um and we all work together to make a cohesive leadership team there um below that is basically the board members which are all of our subgroup leads. and subgroups consist of like engine and drivetrain uh vehicle dynamics um high voltage uh powertrain low voltage circuitry um, business and marketing, manufacturing, stuff like that. Um, so all in all, there's about 15 to 16 of us that are in leadership positions on the team. Um, and we basically make and manage all of the little processes from the top down, right? So my job as president is to go in there and basically 
um, relations with the university, relationships with sponsors, relationships with or managing the social media sites, helping with the business stuff, marketing. And then um, the chief engineer and the project manager are focused on building the car, getting the car built, setting the deadlines. And then the subgroups are responsible. The subgroup leads are responsible for managing their people that are in those subgroups, focusing on their specific tasks, focusing on identifying projects, where we can grow, what we can make better. And then taking that the next step up to the chief engineers to saying, hey, this is an issue. We need a we need a project for this. And then we go through the entire system of making it a project, analyzing it developing it and building it and implement. So, you know, Mickey, this listening to how they've structured their leadership, maybe there's some lessons here for the thing about cars. That sounds a lot less convoluted than the current college of Cardinals that we use to govern our yeah. show. <laughs> I, I agree, Dave, we should probably think about designing some hierarchical structure and, too. And this is not just because I'm mad at Tim for getting papal nuncio ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you are just mad. We, we, we know. But you know that's what that's what happens when you take off for you know two weeks. My 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 follow up question for Dave then is: Will there be nuns? There's always nuns. There's been nuns since <laughs> I started, and I've been here for two years. The nun thing, Stephen, has turned into a running joke for reasons that I'm not sure I understand. Bicycling joke. Uh, yeah. We we don't do running here. That 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 that, that that's against our um you know core dogma. That's true. No running. It's bicycles. Yeah. Bicycles. So, Stephen, I have two questions. Um, do you have young women in the club? We do, in fact. Actually, um, since we are a car club, unfortunately, we don't see a lot of girls interested, but the girls who are interested usually stick around. Um, so of the four or five girls we've got on the team right now, three of them are in key leadership positions. One is that project wow. manager I mentioned and then two are subgroup leads, our manufacturing lead and our low voltage. Um, all three of them are rock stars and they're amazing. They do great work and they they really focus a lot on making the entire team operation better, which has been a really big help for the rest of us. Um, so whenever we do come across those motivated um, young women in engineering or any other like major who want to come and join us or who want to like get involved somehow, we really take the initiative to go out there and tell them that there's a place for them, like a comfortable place for them to live and to work and to learn and to grow. And we really take it upon ourselves to show them that we're willing and able to support them in any way needed to get to where they are. That's awesome. So my next question is AI. Have oh. you tackled it yet? Personally, I don't think we have other than making it write emails for us. I, I use it a lot. Like specifically ChatGBT, I use it a lot for writing like business emails and like filling in all the wording and whatnot. And then I take that and I edit it and whatnot, and then I send it off. Um, design wise, we haven't implemented it AI at all yet because using AI is a very tough thing to do for design. Um, you can use the organic. Uh, there's something where it you give it its basic constraints and you say, hey, like whittle this down so it's the lightest and strongest material it could possibly be, and then do yada, 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 yada. Mm -hmm. In order to make that structure, you have to have a certain type of machine that is capable of doing it. And we don't have that. Um, so CADs aren't aren't doing that yet? CADs aren't, don't have AI incorporated? Uh, specifically, no, not to my knowledge. There are, there are some that definitely do integrate it, but like SolidWorks, the main ones like we use, they don't integrate AI, or I haven't seen them integrate AI yet. They may be working on it. It may be in development, but it is, we aren't given access to that kind of thing with the student editions, which is what we get. And mm -hmm. they're, the student edition is fantastic still, but we don't get like the top of the line professional features or whatnot. Um, gotcha. But as I said, doing an AI design, while it is really cool and you can do a lot of awesome stuff with it, it is very difficult to manufacture and costly and time time consuming. So we haven't really messed with it much um, other than like poking at it. A few of our guys have been like messing around in their spare time, seeing if they can get something to work out. Um, Cause that would honestly be really, really cool for us to be able to use it, and, like design something with it and then make it. Um, but I mean, at the time it just hasn't been feasible for us to go forward and like make that leap yet. So oh, yeah. Speaking of really cool things, have you heard the one about the engineer and the talking frog? I have actually, and okay. I found that <laughs> extremely intriguing. So I'm glad you brought that up. I have not. What's that? 
Tell us. Yeah, oh, yeah do we're tell going back with to 1972 humor now. <laughs> trepidation. Hit it, did, Ben. Tell us the joke. Okay, well, the version I've heard, at least, it may not be the same, uh, is, uh, you know, this this engineer is walking along one day, and this frog hollers at him, hey, man, hey, I'm a talking frog. And he's like, okay, yeah, obviously you are. Uh, and the frog says, if you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful princess, and I'll be yours forever. And he smiles and picks up the frog and puts it in his pocket and keeps going. And every now and then he takes the frog out of his pocket. He says, hey, I'll turn into a beautiful princess if you kiss me and all that, blah, blah, blah. And he smiles and puts the frog back in his pocket. And this goes on for a long, long time. And finally, takes the frog out of his pocket one day. And the frog says, look, buddy, what, aren't, you, aren't you interested in you know turning me into a beautiful princess? And he says, look, I'm an engineer. I spend a lot of time at the lab. I don't have time for a girlfriend. But a talking frog, that's pretty cool. And he puts it back <laughs> in his pocket. <laughs> If we it's had more time, it goes. Huh? It's yeah. pretty much how it goes. That's the way I heard it too. So, <laughs> if we had more time, I'd tell you the one about the three engineers on the park bench. That's pretty hilarious. A little that's bit risque next too. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, yeah that, that, that's next time. That's um, next time, Ben. One more question, and then let's wrap the segment. I have a question. Um, what can people uh, in the community do to help support you? Amazingly brilliant young people. Uh, not only in SAE, but going forward. I mean, honestly, it's just giving us a chance to show our stuff, right? So opportunities like this where I can get on here with you guys and kind of like talk and you guys can see what we're all about be through me, right? I'm a student who is in this program. Uh, showcases for the cars, like Caffeine and Octane has let us come out before, show the cars um, out there in the parking lot with everybody else. We get a lot of interest through that. Other events where we get to take the cars and show off or like take the students, go to companies and like say, hi, hey, like this is who we are. This is what we do. Would you be interested in hiring from us? Because like honestly, our biggest selling point on the team isn't a race car or a sticker on a race car. It's the students. Right. Because everybody wants to hire knowledgeable engineers right out of school. So they really help. It, that kind of thing really helps us when companies or individuals are like, hey, I want to hire from you guys. What what can I do to help you guys in the meantime until I find somebody who's the right fit for my company? Um, so stuff like that really helps. Either usually we'll get a combination of financial material sponsorships, like event sponsorships. They'll pay for like registration for something. They'll give us a discount on a big order for parts we need, stuff like that. Um, and that always helps a lot because teams running on budgets like we are. I mean, like <laughs> the university doesn't pay for everything. We have to go out there and get some of it ourselves. So it's it's a really big challenge. I mean, it's the same way in the engineering world, right? You got to you gotta go out there, get the funding for your project and then actually make it. And then you run into some bumps and hiccups and then you got to go find more funding and, you know, whatever. So that's our, we basically run our team like a small engineering firm, right? We do all the business and marketing ourselves. We do all the engineering ourselves. We do all the budgeting ourselves. Everything is... Student I think that budget thing is something both Don and Dave are all too well acquainted with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, everybody. Uh, uh, Stephen, is your calendar online? Because I know we've talked in the past about trying to visit you when you hit the track or or maybe even helping you guys out with resume development and things like that. So um, is how do we find out when you're going to be racing? Um, I can definitely send you a link uh to our calendar so you can like take a look for yourself it isn't posted publicly anywhere um because oh, we have okay. a lot of campus events and stuff like that that we go to and they don't want those kind of like out in the out in the wild um, sure. but our next big event will be at lamar county speedway in barnesville georgia the weekend of november 4th we'll be there from about three o'clock on friday the third and then we'll be camping overnight through Saturday night, and then we'll wake up and leave Sunday morning by like nine or ten ish, I think. Wow. Okay. So we'll be down there if you all wanted to stop by and say hi. Great opportunity. It'll be us, Clemson, Clemson's formula team, uh, UGA's motorsports team, and Georgia Tech's EV team, since they have two. Okay. Well, let's see if Very we can cool. arrange a uh, the thing about cars s'mores packet. Yo. <laughs> see, we will have campfires. That see? will be a thing. <laughs> I still know college students are like, free food, free food. Yes, Woo. yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Stephen, four questions. You ready? Yeah, hit me with them. What is your dream car? Uh, 69 Corvette Stingray, uh, metallic blue 
uh, double white racing stripes down the center. Wow. Nice. That's sweet. Okay. Very nice. Question number two, where's your next road trip going to be? Most likely major road trip will be to Michigan next summer for a competition. But personally, if I had to choose my next road trip would probably be up to Tennessee. I believe there is another, I got to go to a factory or not a factory. One of the reactors from the Manhattan project over the summer. Oh, oh yeah. In uh, Pasco, Washington. Wow. wow. My family lives mm. up there. So we got to nice. go see the B reactor. And that was a really neat experience. And I heard there's one in Tennessee too. So if I had to take a personal yeah. trip, I'd be going there because engineering is cool. And they engineered the living daylights out of those reactors back the, back in the day. No doubt. That's, that sounds pretty amazing. Question number three. Uh, what's the most fascinating thing you've seen either on the road or in someone's garage? Ooh, I would have to say it was an exact replica of the John Wick Mustang oh. down to oh. the cosmetics from the movie. Wow. And I thought that was pretty cool. And it had like little um, tokens to like the dog to Daisy and to John Wick. And there was like a pistol storage compartment. And it was <laughs> it was pretty neat. It was pretty cool. Misty is probably having an internal struggle with that. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm like, okay, I don't really like the movies because I don't like anything in which the dog gets hurt. Yeah, and I have a serious hate on for Fords. I mean, the question was, would you rather take a Ford, you know, a spe two specific Fords in Atlanta traffic or Boston traffic? And I said, no, thanks. I'd rather work a walk. Um, <laughs> Misty, he kicks ass after that. He avenges the dog and then some. I mean, it's I, 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 I would rather him and the dog sit and you know eat non-chocolate s'mores you know for for, for, for two hours that's all my right, preference right. i really like dogs and right. and steven you also have to understand i'm like a huge dean case fangirl because i own a 2016 uh mazda mx5 yeah um who has a name Ooh. and is probably the cause a, a significant cause of my recent divorce um we all know she didn't get the camera I was what she's done. trying to tell you, Stephen, is that she's single. In case you know anybody, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually everybody not. I know is pretty young. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, so and, and yeah. that that would be super awkward because I think most of you are probably like in the range of my own son, you know, because my, my 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 son is 23, so that would right. be super awkward. Okay. But just, right. I I love cars, just yes. passionately. Yeah. All right, Stephen. Last question. This is the silly one that we like to toss at you. I might toss two, depending on how this first one goes. Uh, you're now a superhero with an unlikely power. Is it the ability to shoot meatballs out of your nostrils or the power to create force fields, but only around insects? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to have to go with force fields because I can definitely see that being more useful. <laughs> because, like, think about it. Like, whenever I want a meatball, sure, that's like infinite food. But what am I going to eat the eat the meatball with? Am I going to make pasta and then like shoot a meatball out of my nostril into my pasta? That sounds like gross and completely we will not unsanitary. Discuss marinara coming out of other orifices. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. like exactly. Like <laughs> what's going to happen there? But like force fields, I like that sounds pretty cool. Like I could pick up a bug off the ground and like throw it at somebody with a force field around it. They get smacked with a rock like <laughs> structure force field. Like that's kind of cool. So that's, that's pretty funny. All right. That's cool. We've got two minutes left. Let me ask you another silly question. Um, if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Okay. I think those are two different answers. My wow. family would probably assume that I was driving a car without registration or insurance <laughs> because of some recent stuff I've had to, like, I had a car and then it broke. So I'm trying to sell it and the registration expired. So my dad's been at me a bunch for like, don't drive it around. And I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. Um, but that would probably be the assumption there. My friends would probably look at me and be like, he got arrested. I have no idea why he got arrested. <laughs> yeah. If he got arrested for something, he probably either didn't do it or it was so dumb that somebody else, he took the blame for somebody else. Probably if I had to guess, because I think out that's of yeah. Like out of my friend group, I'm the I'm the one who is like more responsible, I'd say. And all my friends yeah. are the ones who are doing the the dumb stuff. They're <laughs> going out there and throwing uh taking a red solo cup of gasoline and dumping it on the fire and then oh, being shocked when it flames up all the way back to their hand and they're like, Whoa. And I'm just like, dude, you know. Yeah. But thank you, uh, Stephen. No, 
You yeah. pretty much described the last thing about Car's Christmas party. <laughs> that was true. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> Th- Stephen, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. I hope we get to do this again, and I, I hope we get to see you at some events. So please do send us that calendar link. Um, thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It's really nice to meet all of you. Yeah. And to our fans, with less than a minute left in the show, thanks for joining us. Please stay tuned. We'll have another episode for you as quickly as it can. Everybody take care and be safe out there. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye, y'all. Ciao. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.